The battle at Antietam, like the rest of the Civil War, was a 12-hour tempest that swept across the rolling farm hills of Maryland. It was a clash between the North and the South, a battle that pitted family against family and brother against brother. It was a war that could have been stopped by civilized men. As in life, however, Antietam and all its bloody gore did change the course of the Civil War and helped free millions of African Americans through the Emancipation Proclamation. We must never forget that the battle still ranked as the bloodiest one-day battle in American history. While McClellan's 75,000-man army of the Potomac was moving to intercept Lee, two Union soldiers, Corporal Barton and First Sergeant John M. Bloss, discovered a mislaid copy of Lee's detailed plans. General Lee's complex battle plans divided his outnumbered forces with regiments in different places, such as Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, and other locations. Each place was subject to isolation and defeat if McClellan acted fast enough. Come on, Corporal. You're gonna love us for this. Ah, I'm trying, so I should slow down. The battle was brutal with 23,000 casualties. From dawn till dark, September 17th, the two armies threw frontal attacks on each other, littering the fields with their dead and wounded. Afterwards, as one soldier recalled, the cornfield was so full of bodies that a man could have walked through it without stepping in the ground. Sir, reports from the front line indicate that General Hooker's division was successful. The enemy center is in danger of collapse. We must attack as soon as possible. We have their battle plan. Look, Lieutenant, let me try and put it kindly for you. Just south of us, down there yonder, General Lee is amassing an army, a full army, and we still don't have word on General Ambrose's corps. I will not endanger my men, Lieutenant. But General, this is what we've been waiting for. We have one third of your army waiting for your orders. Look, Lieutenant, don't question my orders. Aye, aye. You're dismissed. By the late afternoon of September the 17th, the losses were heavy on both sides. The Union had 12,401 casualties, with 2,108 dead. Confederate casualties were 10,318, with 1,546 dead. Several generals died as a result of the battle, including Brigadier General William Edwin Stark. By the time the sun went down, both armies still held their ground, despite staggering losses, with nearly 4,000 dead. Well, gentlemen, what a cruel thing is war. Separate and destroy family and friends. Tomorrow, purest joy and happiness God has granted us in this world. Fill our hearts with hatred instead of love for our neighbors. Just dev devastate their face in this beautiful world. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, General Swarg has been shot. Doctor, how bad is it? You won't make it. You sure we can't amputate? There's nothing to be amputated. He was shot at least two times, three times, I don't know chest, abdomen, he'll die within the hour. Are you okay? You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. <coughs> I am afraid there are a few that die well that die in battle. What was that, doctor? Nothing but the words of Shakespeare. Don't mind me. All we can do for the general now is leave him in peace. On the 
morning of September 18, both sides gathered their wounded and buried their dead. That night, Lee turned his forces across the Potomac back to Virginia. The Union claimed the battle as a victory, one that had been long awaited by Lincoln in order to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. The proclamation was a document that turned the Union struggle in the Civil War into a fight for the abolition of slavery. The Battle of Antietam was a horrible clash that killed thousands. Regardless of who was victorious, as Americans, we cannot allow ourselves to forget the Civil War and ultimately all of its atrocities. Action! 